Well, good morning guys. In today's video, we are going to be exploring the ancient city of Pompeii, but also showing you a bit of the new side. Yeah, exactly. So we're going to start off with the ruins in the morning, mm -hmm. pizza for lunch, oh, yeah. and we'll check out the, the new part of the town in the afternoon. That's the, the plan. <laughs> That's the plan. While many travelers visit Pompeii on a day trip, we chose to base ourselves here for a few days. The main draw, of course, were the ruins of Pompeii, an ancient Roman city that was buried under ash and pumice when Vesuvius erupted in 79 AD. What follows is our mini travel guide. All right, guys, we are now entering the amphitheater here in Pompeii. Feels a little dark and spooky. Our first stop inside the complex was the amphitheater of Pompeii. Built around 70 BC, this is the oldest surviving Roman amphitheater to have been built of stone. For comparison, the Colosseum in Rome wouldn't come into existence for another century. We toured the grounds and also checked out the music exhibit on site, because it turns out a lot of bands have played here over the years. Alright, so that was kind of funny. A little less related to the history of Pompeii, a little more related to music. What was that? Yeah, about? like modern rock history. Yeah. So basically, it's a it's a, an exhibit of different bands that have played here over the years. Yeah. There's been some big names. I think out of all the, the bands that have come here, I would have most liked to have seen the Pink Floyd show. That must have been spectacular. Well, this is a cool little spot. We can't actually go in because the gates are locked, but we have a vineyard and right behind you can see Mount Vesuvius. After visiting the amphitheater, which is on the very east end, we started making our way into the city. The streets were cobbled and all along there were rows of houses and villas, many of them with impressive frescoes that tell the tale of a wealthy city with lavish homes. Okay, so next up we are visiting what would have been a really nice home. This one is called the House of Venus in the Shell. And if you look over my shoulder, I think we all know why. So all along Pompeii streets you've got these little stepping stones to kind of cross from one side of the street to the other and that's because they used to have water just running down the streets to keep them clean. So yeah, this would have been your little bridge. <laughs> quite, uh, quite genius, isn't it? One of the reasons Pompeii is so well preserved is because it was buried quickly by volcanic ash and pumice, plus the lack of air and moisture also allowed for the buried artifacts to be extremely well preserved. Stepping into the homes is like stepping into the past. You can still see the elaborate mosaic floors and vibrant frescoes frozen in time. Okay, we've been walking around for yeah. a while. Impressions on the crowds, Sam? I'm surprised at like how many people are visiting here for December yeah. 4th. Yeah. It just like we found a quiet little nook here, but I can't imagine how busy it must be in the summer. It must be absolutely bananas. Yeah, like it's already feeling a little bit crowded yeah. in the winter time during high season. Whoa. 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 <laughs> Whoa. Okay guys, so we figured we would take a minute to talk about the price. So entrance to the archeological site is 13 euros per person and you get this little brochure, which actually unfolds yeah. into this massive map of yeah, the whole it, archeological park so you know where to go. Something that surprised me is just how big 
the the the, the site is like this is massive it's huge you could spend a whole day here easily yeah. yeah okay also here is a little tip for you when we were walking in we were approached by someone i dropped my ticket whoops <laughs> when we were walking in we were approached by someone who said they worked for the tourist office um and we were asking like oh is this the entrance and he's like oh yeah come come you buy the tickets here and then when we went in there they were trying to sell us either a guided tour or an audio tour and they told yeah. us those are the only two options to visit pompeii and we're like this sounds a little bit no. fishy so we walked out of there and it turns out you just buy your tickets yeah. right at the entrance you don't need a guide you, you don't. don't need an audio tour if you don't want to pay extra so yeah yeah where so you do you do have those options and yeah just yeah. just know that to buy your ticket you go to the main entrance that's yes. the key point Continuing our walk through Pompeii, we eventually reached the Forum. This square would have been the center of life for locals with temples, municipal buildings and markets. The statue of the centaur, half man, half horse, is a focal point, as is the view of Mount Vesuvius looking down on the ruins. So here's a little interesting piece of history I read. Apparently, when the volcano erupted in 79 AD, one of the reasons that Pompeii wasn't expecting it is because they didn't even know Mount Vesuvius was a volcano. They thought they just lived at the foot of a mountain. And that's because the last time the volcano had erupted had been 1800 years before that. So, Either they had no records of their history, or they had lost it, or it had been long forgotten. Either way, they were very unprepared for what came. To finish off our visit of Pompeii, we walked along the southern edge of the ruined city where we saw the casts of the victims of Vesuvius. When archaeological teams began excavating Pompeii, they noticed there were large voids in the compacted ash whenever they were digging around bones. By pouring plaster into the spaces, they were able to capture the final poses of the residents' last moments in the city. Alright guys, so it is time for lunch. We just visited the ruins of Pompeii and we probably spent like three hours there walking around in the cold. Super fascinating, but we are hungry. It is time for lunch. So today we're gonna take you to one of our favorite pizzerias in all of yeah. Pompeii. This is gonna be our third time going there and we, we haven't been in town that long. <laughs> we found it the first night and yeah. it just seems like a nice like family owned business. Yes. And so we'll go back again, why not? One of our best discoveries of our time in Pompeii was Pizzeria Alleria. We stumbled here soaking wet on our first night in the city and we just couldn't stay away after that. Here's what the fuss is all about. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, the pizza is here and it looks amazing. We ordered the margarita with the buffalo cheese and we finally got it right yes, because we finally. saw someone eating this pizza on the first night. We were like, whoa, that looks so good. And then we came back the following we day the and we tried ordering that, that one. We got one without the sauce. It was only cheese. It was, it was only cheese so and sad. tomatoes. Cheese and like little cherry tomatoes. Yeah. But this is what we've been after the whole time. So you've got like your tomato sauce base yes. or pomodoro, I guess. This one comes with a buffalo cheese. You've got your basil and then extra virgin olive oil. Just oh, yeah. drizzled oh, all yeah. over. Oh my goodness. And like we've worked up an appetite. I mean, after walking around Pompeii for three hours, yeah. you can bet we are starved. We're fiercely hungry. Fiercely and we're, hungry. We're, we're basically going for like the classic, uh, classic pizza here in Italy. Like simple, simple in terms of the toppings, but very high quality ingredients. Is that what we've been waiting for? Game over. <laughs> I kid you not when I say this, I could eat this every day and never get sick of it. It's so it's good. good. It's that good. 
After that, we ended up getting a second margarita pizza. The first one was just too tasty. And then we also ordered the Nutella cheesecake, which was just as decadent as it looks. Okay guys, so we've now had our lunch and it is time to explore modern Pompeii. The only thing is, it is freezing cold, so I don't think we're gonna last very long. But we're here in front of the church in the main square, so yeah. we're gonna take you on a little tour. A little a tour of the tour. area. A very quick tour, and then we're gonna call it a day. Yes! We started our do-it-yourself tour of modern Pompeii at Piazza Bartolo Longo, a beautiful plaza lined with palm trees right in the heart of the city. Standing in the square, it's impossible to miss the Shrine of the Virgin of the Rosary of Pompeii, where once you step in, you are greeted with painted domes and golden ceilings. And then from there, we went to the top of the bell tower for a 360-degree view of the city. Okay guys, so we just paid two euros to go up the campanile, or the bell tower, and there was actually an elevator, so we didn't have to climb the steps. And now that we're up here, we get some amazing views of all of Pompeii, and we can even see Mount Vesuvius. Ta -da! Since we're the only ones here right now, the guy said when we're ready to just ring the bell up there, which I've done. Ooh, okay, and the elevator is finally moving. I was thinking, this guy isn't coming for us. <laughs> it's moving. It's moving. It is a bit of a rickety old one too. All right, Sam, final thoughts on Pompeii. Final thoughts on Pompeii. So yeah, we had a great time. My gosh, it was so much bigger than I first anticipated. Yeah. Like we spent just over three hours there, but I think if we really wanted to, we could have at least spent a full day. It's yeah. a half day or a full day excursion. I can't imagine doing it on one of these rush tours where you would also go here and then to Mount Vesuvius and yeah. Herculaneum. That would be nuts. So yeah. my advice is to maybe do it independently and to just enjoy walking around. Yeah, that's that's definitely my advice.